Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Frostbites Gaming Experience, part 36 of the Pokemon Emerald walkthrough, where it's actually not going to be relatively as confusing as a part as, as I initially thought. We're going to be, well, first we're going to start off in Sutopolis City, getting around the items that we can get, including these particular gentlemen here. So, this guy loves low tads, and what you do is you show him a low tad bigger than any other low tad that he has ever seen, and if it is bigger, then he's gonna give you a free elixir. His brother, onto the right, is the same thing but with the C dot. Now, see, that's a lot harder to get because there's only 1% chance of getting it in the air unless a swarm is going on. However, another way to get it is by trading for dots. So, what I did, I went to Route, one, route 102 where you can get low tad and C dot and went around for a bit until eventually I ran into a Ralts instead and I knew that okay if I get Ralts then I can trade it for a C dot and just pray that this one C dot is actually the right size and it was got an elixir there as well so two free elixirs cool thing is though is that you can just keep spamming that area for free elixirs because if then you continue to show them more of the same type another low tat or another c dot of a bigger one than the previous one that you showed them they will give you another elixir until you've hit the maximum size that they can possibly hit which i don't know what the maximum size for any of them are really i just kind of went around I remember the first low tat I got was not big enough, so I actually had, I caught like five of them until I found one that was big enough. And then it turns out I had four that were actually big enough. And I kind of just kind of traded him with a little bit. And I was like, oh wait, you can just keep on doing this infinitely if you wanted to. So if you're really looking for a whole bunch of elixirs, that's your way to do it. Get as many C dots and low tats as you can and just show them in an order that gets you the most amount of elixirs. Because it has to be bigger than the one that you previously showed them. And we got Brick Break, which we'll be teaching to Blazekin off camera. We can finally say goodbye to Double Kick and actually learn a brand new fighting style move. Very strong one too. 75 power and has the ability of breaking walls like reflect, reflect and light screen down. So it actually gives you a bonus effect along with the fact that it's already a strong move to use in the first place. So really good on that. And then the rest of this video, we're going to be checking out all of Route 127. Again, I initially thought that Route 127 was going to be a little bit harder to do because of the fact that, again, a lot of it's going to be going underground, using dive, all that stuff. And some of the areas, there's like this really big one that connects Route 127 and Route 128 together. And I thought it was going to be extremely confusing having to navigate and find all the hidden items down there. Good news is, not nearly as hard as I initially thought it was going to be. I really thought that by adding in the move dive, again, along with the fact that what I talked in the last episode of, you know, it's the C looks exactly the same, so it's gonna play exactly the same. You know, and it's gonna get confusing, everything's gonna look like one another, hey, there's a rock here, but there's also a rock here, where even am I? Um, and in some cases it still kind of is that, but not to the extreme that I initially thought it was going to be, including adding in the underground water of, oh, hey, everything underground also looks the same. No, it really kind of doesn't. And so because of that, uh, Route 127 not nearly as hard as initially thought. Number of trainers that we are going to be going against, um, different varieties as well as you can tell. We're going against a bird keeper and a cool trainer and... Unfortunately, the cool trainers of Anetric is just giving me the sauce right now, paralyzing me like it's nobody's business. And, you know, Milotic, I can only go so far until I'm like, okay, we got to switch it on out. But at the end of the day, you know, still relatively easy to take care of. There's a lot more swimmers, a lot more water types. That's why we have Magneton in the forefront, because we might as well try and make this as quick and painless as humanly possible as we can, with the exception of a couple trainers here and there that we have to deal with. But again, nothing too bad. All of the hidden items that we are looking to get in Route 127 underwater. So let's go back when we are in Route number 26 using dive in 109, 108. Uh, you could tell where the hidden item was because of the fact that you would see a black circle around it. And it was easy just to go up, pick it up, call it good. Here, instead of there being a black circle on the ground to showcase where it's at, there is a rock. A very distinguishable rock that, you know, only appears underwater if there is an item within it that you can go ahead and pick up. Makes it a lot easier, especially on the fact that they're more laid out, like, you got 
uh, mostly like four areas that you can dive in on. Uh, the three main ones, you have one to the left, one to the right, and one in the center. The left and right one, as like what we are looking at with one of the ones I'm going down right now, are not connected to the same center one, which the center one connects down to Route 128. That's where I initially thought it was going to be confusing, as I thought a majority of what I had to find would be in that center Route 1. It's actually not. It's on the leftmost, the rightmost, and then like another one that leads somewhere else. But this is the big portion that you can tell, just by that one darker blue area. And we go to the other side of it, and we're going to be picking ourselves up the next hidden item with the rock. Now, that doesn't stop me from missing an item, though. Unfortunately, I do actually forget that there is still one more item in the big connection one between route 127 and route 128 uh easy to get to though so by the time i start the next part the first thing i'll do is go out of my way to get that item before continuing on with the next part because all we're doing we're getting route 127 out of the way and then we're going to deal with team aqua in the next part after team aqua we'll deal with route 128 and then really try and move the story from there on out so Things are moving into progress, and again, a little bit faster than anticipated. I really, really thought that Route 127, Route 128, all that was going to be a huge pain in the ass. And based on what I've been doing so far, not nearly as hard as I initially thought. So thank God on that. We're able to get done with it a lot sooner and be out on our way. Aside from that, nothing else really is going to be going on in this one part. Again, there's another dive spot um, further on that you have to use in order to access another item in another part of Route 127 that's only accessible by using dive. Kind of like what we did in the last part in Route 126 where we had to use dive to go under that one rock blockage area and then come right back up. Same exact thing here. A little bit easier to see though because Route 127 has all these big areas that you can dive in and only one spot that's small to dive in. So obviously the small spot's what you want to go into and then come up on the other side of the small diving spot. Call it good right there. Uh, Pokemon-wise, literally the exact same thing we just went through with Route 126. All right, you got your Whalemers, you got your Sharpedos, Magikarps, Tentacles, and then I don't believe, actually, so the, the thing about Route 127 is that all the underwater dive spots doesn't have seaweed in it. So we're actually not having any stats on Route 127 at all for the underwater portion of it. Because again, no seaweed, nothing to go into. Again, every single time you use dive, go underwater, it doesn't act like it does with surf, where now all of a sudden you can be attacked by anything. Nope. Once you dive, it has to be seaweed, just the same it is with tall grass. So there's that. That's really about it. That's all that we got going on here. And, um... Yeah, that's about it. Again, I'm mostly just looking forward to finally getting back to live commentary stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Legacy of Goku 2, getting that all done. And uh, Stardew Valley as well. I know Stardew Valley hasn't been like the most popular thing that I've done on the channel, but I've been having fun with it, and that's all it really... You know, I do this for me. I do it for you guys too, for those of you that actually do enjoy watching it. I do want you guys to be entertained, but there are some games that I just genuinely want to play. I wanted to play Stardew Valley again. It's one of my favorite games, actually. You know, it takes me back to my Harvest Moon days while, at, while adding in some other aspects, and it's a lot of fun. You know, I've, I've been enjoying it. Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, you know, some RPG fighting elements. It's actually a really good, fun, calming time as well. You know, it, it's very relaxing to play a game like that. That's why I've been having fun doing that, doing it for the channel as well. Again, I know a lot of you guys aren't really watching that, but, you know, if you want something really calm, or if you want me to see... If you want to see me just play something and being calm while playing it, you know, I can't say that, you know, every other game I do, I'm like wild and crazy and I'm all this kind of weird personality or something like that. That's obviously never been, it's never been really a thing of mine. I just like being me. Now, sometimes I can raise my voice a bit, you know, and get a little bit too hypey, but the hype that I get into is never staged. You know, I, if I get hype about something, it means I'm legitimately getting hype about it. I'm not doing it just trying to get those free clicks and all that stuff. That's not who I am. You know, I'm not that entertaining of a person. And quite frankly, I think I'm, you know, that boring of a person in some cases. But, you know, pay to each their own. You guys enjoy watching it? Fine. I'm not going to tell you guys to stop watching. Have fun with it. You know, this is just a fun little casual time. And I think that's what Stardew Valley brings as well. It's just a fun, casual little time. You know, it doesn't have to be anything too serious. It's just something for fun. Anyways. 
Mm. So, with the, I don't know, Fisherman Brothers out of the way, not very many more trainers we have to go against. There are two more swimming trainers and then one more fighting trainer as long as getting the item. And then, yeah, that's it. Again, apologies for these episodes that don't really have a whole lot going in them besides trainer fights. But at the same time, when it comes to Pokemon games, a majority of the game is, well, trainer fights. And I know I could be going through this a lot faster, but again, the way I prefer to do these, I want to showcase every fight and showcase every item. And this is going to be a little bit longer than your casual, you know, let's play or walk through of Pokemon games where their main goal is just to try and beat it as, or even a speed run, beat it as quickly as you can. You know, I I prefer showcasing everything. You know, I'm a uh, not not to like take the guy's trademark or anything like that, but I'm a completionist, all right. <laughs> but not like I mean, obviously, you know, making jokes and whatnot. But for real though, usually when I play certain RPG style games, which I consider Pokemon to be, I kind of do want to go out of my way and do everything that I possibly can within the game. So in Pokemon's case, that means actually trying to find every item and battle every trainer. Now, outside of that, when it's just me playing and not recording for you two, that also means going on my way and completing the Pokedex, catching every single Pokemon as best I can, you know, stuff like that. Um, but when it comes for the channel, there's plenty of other channels that do stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure there's also some channels out there that do showcase the location of every item and the location of every single trainer. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't seen it myself. In most cases, it's someone just playing Pokemon, especially lately. Oh my god, not to go into a huge rant about it, but uh, me and my friends were talking about it recently, and oh my god, I am so tired of seeing everywhere that I go. Whoa, hang on a second. Getting a little bit weird thing with my microphone. Okay, I think we're good. I am so tired of seeing all these YouTube videos. It's like, oh, beating Pokemon with just this. Beating Pokemon just using a Pikachu. Beating Pokemon just using a Caterpie or something like that. I'm sorry. I am sick and tired of seeing those. I don't care. I don't care that you can beat Pokemon just using one Pokemon. Have fun with it. For one thing, you're lying. You know, let's just get that out of the way right now. Any video that says beating Pokemon with just this one Pokemon, they're absolutely lying to you. Here's why. Because it is impossible to beat the entire game just using one Pokemon. You have to have your HM bitches. Now, I'm assuming that with the whole only thing, that's a rule where it's like, oh, the only, only thing about it is that it's the only Pokemon fighting. We need other Pokemon for HMs, but it's the only Pokemon fighting. Well, then to me, I'm sorry, that's not technically a, oh, beating it only using this no you're not because it's impossible to be pokemon with just one pokemon maybe when they implement hms as like something your own trainer does and not one of your other pokemon which i think i remember hearing um was it let's go eevee and let's go pikachu introduces that which is kind of cool you know i, I th always thought that h of the way that i did a video a long time ago was like the eight things i wanted in pokemon and one of them was like how hms were done where you could use HMs as a normal move, like Surf, that I think is a really good water type move, or you have your own HM slot, and every Pokemon can learn one HM only move. It's not used in battle, it's used for the world. I've always thought that that should be the way to do it, because then you have an option. You know, you can use the HM as an actual move, if you so wish, but you don't have to, because you have a fifth slot that's meant for your, you know, exploration HMs. But from what I hear, they kind of implemented a new way, and I don't know if it was any earlier than this, but I remember hearing about it in Let's Go Eevee, Let's Go Pikachu, where you, the trainer, get, like, the items. You know, instead of having to learn the... That there's the rock that I go right past. How did I miss it? Maybe I thought I already picked it up or something. I don't know, but we'll be going back to get that hidden item in that rock that I just completely ignore. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It... I've always felt like, hey, you know, the Pokemon and HM should not be a thing. Maybe it adds a little bit more to it as far as, like, knowing what Pokemon should have and what they shouldn't have. But to me, it's like, it kind of takes away from the fun of building a good move set around your team. So I'm glad to see that they've at least made some steps towards it. I don't know, but bottom line is, you can't beat Pokemon with just one Pokemon. You need your HM Pokemon as well. I know it's a bit of a nitpick, but I'm also just kind of overseeing those videos because I don't give a crap what one Pokemon you pick, you pick to beat it with, it, it doesn't matter. I don't care. You, you just, just beat the game and shut up. That's all there is to it. Anyways, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your evenings, and we will catch you all in the next part.